welcome viewers of this setup. The Jehovah Witnesses theological abuse. You know, so, good day, mate. That was a nice fish you got yesterday. Yeah. There's still a lot of guys going out, so they must be there. It's the big ones I worry about. Oh, he's a nice one. Hope you get a few, mate. Theological abuse is probably a highly overlooked subject and it's rampant. It's used for pedophilia. It's used for um, the control of millions across the world. Once you come into theological abuse it creates a very devoted and loyal following because people want to be right with God. By nature, people want to be right with God. <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome to the paddle this morning, viewers. I've just done my walk. You'll find that the Jehovah Witness um, indoctrinational system is effective, but it preys primarily on people that are vulnerable, uh, it catches people at stages in their life where things possibly aren't going right, they're looking for answers, and maybe spiritual ones, and they just so happen to come across the Jehovah Witnesses. Now these people do present themselves well, that is part of their tactic to present well, to um, look like life's in order. But let me say something to you. If, spirit, if your spirituality is wrong, and for the most part, a lot of people have got it wrong, we're all developing in these things, but staying in the truth of the Bible is pretty simple if you want to come back to it all and that is to love your neighbour as yourself. So the sad part about the Jehovah Witnesses is they peddle this propaganda that even the simplest Bible student could see is completely and utterly wrong. It's completely and utterly wrong, not partly wrong completely and utterly wrong and what that does is it misleads people and then those people mislead people and it becomes a toxic spiritual environment built on the Bible which is advertised to be the opposite. Now once they've love bombed you and I mean narcissistically, theologically narcissistically love bombed you and got you in, they immediately go to work on programming your mind to accept only the doctrines of that cult and to love the doctrines of the cult, to pride yourself on the doctrines of the cult, to live by the doctrines of the cult and to live by the doctrines of the cult in a way in which if family members, friends, um, and the like don't agree with your beliefs then you're taught to begin to 
a disattack from those people, unattached. Start to distance yourself and to love the teachings of the watchtower. So you are programmed deep in the value systems of your mind to put the watchtower society as the most valuable thing in your life. And they do it micro-incrementally because the structure of the teaching is set up so that that's how you develop. You become entrained. You become programmed to believe that it is the truth, that it's the only truth, and that they're the only ones that are going to find salvation. That's why it's a cult. Because the fact of the matter is, it's based on lies, horrible lies, terrible lies, malicious lies. Now, you want your spirituality, that part of your life, to be healthy, don't you? And with theological abuse, like any other abuse, it makes you start to try and excel at impressing the abuser. Okay, you become, begin to become controlled by and wanting to serve the abuser. In this case, it's the theological abuse of the watchtower. And you become devoted in a traumatized way. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. Because deep in the back of your spirit, your spirit will be saying, that's not right. But you're being convinced, constantly convinced, that it is right. That's how it works. And what happens is, as you go along, as time passes, you begin to start to conflict with yourself. But the narcissistic lying and scheming and programming of the organisation entraps you and ensnares you mentally and emotionally in a way in which you want to persist in serving the organization because now you're a part of the group. You're a part of that theologically abusive tribe, organization. You become part of the family. You become part of the structure and now your identity Identity is grounded on these beliefs, on the structure of the organization, um, and there's an excitement as you leave your home to go and be in the group because now you're addicted, now your identity is founded on the lies and deceptions of the group and you're being rewarded for accepting that emotionally. There's a lot of ego stroking, even in the doubt and confusion that's underlying it all. You'll meet people in the organisation that just don't seem to be right. There's just something not right, something's wrong. You sense this and you're well aware of it, but you push these things to the back of your 
mind which is sending red flags and other things at you. Giving you warning signs. And you're not responding to them. You're becoming numb now to your innate conscientious warning signs that something's just not right here because it's presented on the surface so well so consistently and when you're in the group when you're in the family when you're in the theologically abusive tribe you start to become cognitive dissident you have to because the things that you're being taught and the things that you're seeing in the group that are dysfunctional and you're not comfortable with, you have to start pushing down and pretending that they're not there. So what is happening to you now is, and welcome to the sunrise here in Gosford on the Brisbane water, um, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. As you're seeing and sensing these obvious wrongs, these obvious suspicious, villainous lies, you, you have to start becoming cognitive dissident. You're deliberately telling yourself everything's all right. You deliberately start telling yourself, I, I accept this as right, even though I don't feel right about it. And you start to turn against yourself. That's the abuse. Those trains are going to Sydney. Sydney's one hour south of Gosford. Uh, one and a half hours south, depending on what train you're on. From Gosford, you start turning against yourself. But you're not aware of this. This is all happening in the spiritual mind realm. And now you start priding yourself on all the effort you're putting into the study. You're coming in and you're getting your ego stroked for doing this and doing that. Um, and progressing and then somebody in the family says to you can't you see that's obviously wrong and all of a sudden without any warning you feel like you are being misled. That's how the cult works. And you say to your family, well, you're not in it and you don't know much about it. These people are good. These people are good. That doesn't mean the teachings are good. That doesn't mean the theological abuse is good. These teachings are good and I'm okay. Everything will be all right. And now what happens is you put a space between yourself and the family members. That's exactly how it's geared to work. Because like a narcissist, once the theological narcissism and abuse through the Watchtower Society and the Jehovah Witnesses starts to take on your loyalty and devotion and mindfulness, then it begins to put a paranoia in you, a schizophrenia in you, of which you will defend your beliefs at the expense of the people that are closest to you. And guess what happens? Psychologically now, you're starting to put wedges and barriers. Separateness 
schism and division between yourself and your family, your family members. Now, while all this is happening, you're trying to indoctrinate them. You're trying to convert them to come on board to the Watchtower. Look at all the good it does. Now, might I say that they don't do charity. <coughs> it's a multi-conglomerate business organization that uses religion as a shop front. And these people are completely unaware. The founder of the organization, well, he wasn't the founder, but Charles Taze Russell, um, molested and then become involved with his the servant that worked in his house which cost him his marriage and it was a vicious divorce he went into lust and violated all the stuff he taught because that's what happens when you're listening and following lies you become the lie you will betray yourself. You will. It's just a matter of time. And if you don't betray yourself physically, you most certainly betray yourself mentally and emotionally and spiritually. And that's probably harder to overcome than the physical abuse. Because usually when there's physical abuse or sexual abuse or that kind of thing, um, that changes everything. That's where a lot of people get set free from it. The police come in. Um, people get arrested. A lot of them are getting arrested now, the pedophiles and sexual perpetrators, because this kind of information is helping people to wise up to things that are wrong. It's, it's protecting them from their cognitive dissonance. That's what the Jehovah's Witness want. They want you to be blind to rationale. They don't want you to see rationale. Like a narcissist. It's theological narcissistic abuse. What gives me the right to say it? Well, I'm with the one with the doctorate, not you, in theology. I did the work. It's dangerous, it's demonically powerful and deceptively powerful. It grooms its victims systematically and thematically. The system works once it's got its claws into you. And as it turns on, the more it turns on itself, the more cognitive dissident, the more ignorant to its devices you have to become. My advice to you is listen to your conscience. If something doesn't seem right and you've been fair in your judgment towards it, it's not right. I don't think it's fair to judge things on Ignorance. I think you should judge things on the value of what it really is. And the Jehovah Witness cult has proven to be diabolical, scheming, thieving, and ruinous to millions of lives. Over 50,000 people, as far as I understand, have given their lives to the demonic, evil, satanic blood doctrine which refuse, causes you to refuse to have a blood transfusion think about it very carefully think about it for yourself and then think about it for your family the Watchtower organization failed, and it failed a long time ago. And now 
it's just bluffing its way for as long as it can. For as long as it can um, during its exposure. Look up the Australian Royal Commission into the Jehovah Witnesses on YouTube. There's plenty of information there. It's on my channel, all of it. I took the time to upload it. and educate yourself on the evil underlying the Jehovah Witness narcissistic theologically abusive organisation. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison. Bye for now.